Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing a very basic subject, but one that is usually overlooked. I'm getting a lot of questions on switches, and I thought I would do a video on how to check your switches and when to check them, even if they're installed in your system. Sounds silly. This video could literally save your bacon, and I want to start with these small plastic micro switches, which many guys have installed for home switches or limit switches and you can see we've got the typical uh, normally closed normally open and calm and real simple we've got our fluke 179 true rms multimeter set up i've got it set to the ground and we've got tone so all we're going to do is we're going to connect the probe to the comm we're going to connect another probe to normally closed this is the most common hookup for most switches and you can hear we have tone once the switch is triggered we do not have tone anymore. Okay, do it again. So in a normally closed, you can see your circuit's closed, normally closed. Normally open, you can see it's open. And then when we close the switch, by triggering it, you can see it's completely backwards. See? Now, once you install these in your machine, and again, I'm not a big fan of physical switches. Many guys have asked me. I like soft limits. These can eventually fail. I've seen many fail. Unfortunately, I get many emails regarding potential clients with switch failures or switch malfunctions. And I'm telling you right now, my recommendation is do a preventative maintenance or a PM on your robot after 10 hours of use. Once these are installed and I get the question, well, Vin, I can't. I can't actually connect anything because I'll have solder leads on here. I can't access them easily in my robot. That's not true. Take your cable, use your probes, and just use your probe for whatever conductors we're connecting to. So you'll connect one probe to normally closed if, for instance, your switch is set up normally closed, and one set up for the comm, and you'll get tone either way. And you'll see, just like this, whether a switch is there or not, you'll get the same uh, action. So again, testing optimally, optimally is done after 10 hours of system use, once again using your timer inside of the maintenance schedule within Mach 3 or other motion control software. Now, coming over to an e-stop, now many of you are familiar with these. This unit will literally save your machine in the event something happens, and again, no different than a switch, but this, this one's actually taken for granted, and I cannot emphasize enough what you need to check and should check prior to doing any system build. So, as you see here, the red side is our normally closed side. You can see that there, and I'm going to press the switch, and you can see now we're breaking the circuit. We'll do it again. There you go. Now, guys will ask me, what's the green side? Well, if the red side is normally closed, then we know that our green side is normally open, and we can see that now. There's no connection. As soon as I press the switch, there you go. Do it again. It's only triggered when the switch is actually depressed vice versa of normally closed. And you'll see that again, the switch is still pressed, that's why we have no activity. I reset the switch and you're all set. Now, another critical switch to test is your power switch. You can see I staged mine already. This is ready to be installed in an enclosure, then I actually do the uh, other two terminals. Uh, we've got a neutral lead, we've got our power lead here, and very, very simple test. All you're gonna do is attach a probe, and you can see our, our uh, holes right here on our terminals, and you wanna match a terminal to a terminal. So if we're going with a white, on the white side, which would be neutral, we're just gonna come over here and just power it up. Make sure your probe's got contact, and you're good. Turn it off, power it up, again, and there you go. You know that this conductor and this conductor are making contact within the switch. Why do you want to do this? Well, let's say you're new at soldering and unfortunately use too much heat. You want to know if this switch is bad prior to you assembling it in your system. Why? Because it's a hell of a lot easier to change when you find out before it's installed. Trust me. Okay. The next one, we do our red side. Same process. Very, very simple. I'm going to come in here. Do the same thing. We're golden. Done. Now, this is going to sound different to most people. Um, I like to test my switches after being soldered, especially power switches, between five or six cycles. And the reason I do that 
is because as the solder is cooling, everything is getting readjusted, you still want to make sure the contacts internally in the switch do not shift. It's better to give yourself a little time, double check everything, triple check everything before you install your fire and forget power switch because once you do, once again, reversing the job may not be as easy. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. It was a really quick demonstration. Uh, like I said, there are multitudes of systems out there using a, uh, a whole plethora of these type of switches, um, especially micro switches. Um, the more accessories you add, you're going to find uh, many guys will be adding more micro switches. But keep in mind, the more of these units you add, the more variable for malfunction you have. And I say that all the time. Every time you add an accessory to a robot that's in production, that potential accessory can be another downfall. So where it may be a beneficial end to adding protection potentially to your system, the double-edged sword is that it can also be a troubleshooting uh, variable when you actually are going through the system to make sure everything is set and also adds more time for you to troubleshoot the system just to make sure once again a PM has been done and you know you're keeping your service intervals set. So I thank you all for your support. Take care.